Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Okay, I'm going to talk to you about the five most common mistakes when doing a portrait of a horse. Well, number one is reference, observation, and composition. It's okay. There's so many good pictures here. I want to paint them all. Look at this one. What a great picture. This one too. These are all obviously great photographers and they do an amazing job at capturing the horse and all its glory. So, yes, you do want to paint every single one of them. But you can't. But you can if you're studying, if you're in the process of learning. Um, if, if you're a beginner, uh, don't just grab the one that you love the most. Uh, pick one that, that is going to teach you something. Pick one that is good, high quality, uh, either with good lighting. Um, evaluate the picture that you have that you love the most of your host. Does it have good lighting? Does it have lights in the shadow? Does, does it have a, a, a whole a range of uh, values? Sometimes one of the issues is that we tend to rely too much on our imagination. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it's important to use your imagination when you're painting uh, and use your photo just as a reference. But if you rely too much and if you don't know your anatomy well, if you don't know the bone structure well or the muscles well, um, even sometimes light and shadows, if you don't know them, then it, it, gets, it won't give you that realistic look you may have a poor composition. So it's framed in, in a strange way, in a weird way, in a, in a different or complicated angle. It gives you um, there's a certain perspective that they, they will give you a, uh, a, a, distorted, a distorted view of the horse. So you want to pick something. I would say pick your battles too. You, know? you don't want to have to fight the photo uh, in order to get a, a good, realistic portrait. Um, also, when you're looking for a particular photo, make sure that there's not um, that it's, there's no lens distortion. I I do prefer pictures that are shot in the 50 to 70 millimeter range, wide angles. Uh, they they produce uh, this uh, fish eye lens and. And you don't want to do that. You, you want to be as nat naturalistic as possible. Point number two is uh, get yourself a book on animal anatomy. Now, this one by Jack Ham has been with me for over 20 years. Now, remember, you're not doing medical illustration. So you don't, you don't need to know every single bone or every single muscle in order to get a, a well-rendered horse. Um, Jack Ham does a very good job at, at defining what's important on, on the anatomy. Uh, where the muscles go, um, the bones, uh, he does comparisons with other animals. I, I really, but this, uh, I find this book very useful. Um, it also shows uh, um, the angles of the head and the shapes that, and the lines that you need to follow. So grab a sketch pad and do some uh, quick studies. Um, look at the proportions. It's, uh, that's also very important out of the uh, horse. That make sure that you get the, the, right, the right size of the eye compared to the, the nose, compared to uh, the ears, all that will make it more, more realistic. Learn, learn the skeleton, learn the muscles, the main muscles, and, and how they change with light. I think that's important too. The next point is I'm going to explain value and light. Light. So make sure that you get, if you can see how the light changes on, on Max's face, depending on the angle of the light. Uh, what you're trying to do is you want to get an area with light and an, and an area in shadow. 
I see a lot of artists that paint use uh, photos that, that they have flat light, either with a flash or natural light on a cloudy day that is very flat. And so all those peaks and valleys that the face could have uh, are not addressed. And you, can, you can't see them because the light is completely flat. So that is, uh, that is very important. Find one that has very defined lights and shadows. Remember, you're, you're using this uh, photograph to learn how to paint. Once you start acquiring more skills, then you can play with light. You can use different sources of light. You can change the colors of the light or the temperature. But for now, as a, as a starting point, have a um, very well-defined light and shadow. Let's move on to color. So now um, an inaccurate color selection is when you choose a palette that is overly saturated or it has uh, colors that are art that they look artificial. Now, well, I'm not talking about modern art. I'm not talking about uh, creating an abstraction notebook of what you're painting. But you, if you want to um, have a more naturalistic uh, look at the horse, colors have uh, the horses have a specific palette. So it's important to uh, pick the right colors when you're painting. So do not ignore local color. The underlying color of an object, which is unaffected by light, is crucial for accuracy. The final point is uh, it's about details and texture. If you put too much emphasis on details and you paint every single hair strand, or and every eyelash, you will distract from the overall form and you create a busy look. At the same time, if you make it too cartoony, then you lose that quality of a well-rendered artwork. It's important to, to put uh, details what is needed. For example, in the eyes, it's very important so you can give that uh, life, uh, you can in imbued life into into the horse. Um, the nostrils also um, are important. The ears are important to put details on. Uh, the coat of the horse has a, a different texture. So depending on the breed, you approach it differently. You're using a different brush strokes, uh, breaking the pattern so so the coat doesn't look monotonous and follow the, sh the form of the horse. And uh, that way you you break it into pieces and use, uh, uh, use uh, confident brush strokes. And finally, uh, work in capturing the personality of the horse. Um, work on the, on the eye and give life to the eye, which is critical to convey emotion. Well, that's it. Those are the most common mistakes when painting a horse.